Hi, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics video number nine. My name is Robert Distinti. If you're curious about what Ethereum Mechanics is, you can go look at the intro video, which is video number uh, one. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is demystifying mathematics. I'm going to show you that math is nothing more than uh, if you can count chickens, you can do anything Einstein can do. And then we're going to introduce the epochs of natural structure, which is some uh, way of sh uh, way of of of, of looking at stuff. Okay, mathematics is the most valuable tool that mankind has ever invented. Okay, what few people realize is everything in mathematics can be derived from the ability to count chickens, basically addition. If you can do addition, you can do anything in mathematics. And you say, well, that's kind of naive. How, how do you say that? How can you say that? Well, this, my friends, is a microprocessor from the 19 uh, set the, designed in the 1970s. This one is actually 30 years. This one's made in 83, which is 30 years ago. This is Z80 microprocessor. All it has is hardware for addition, and with a slight little addition of a slight few extra gates, they can use use addition logic to make uh, subtraction. So pretty much all it can do is add and subtract, and its its ability to subtract is based on the ability to add. Um, it, that was designed in 1970. And all the other mathematics is achieved by repeating the ability to add. So let me introduce this structure to you. It looks like a horn. So down here we have the integer add, which is add i. From add i you can do subtract i, and add i comes across. So each one of these levels I call an echelon. Okay, as you go down the echelon, things get simple. As you go up the echelon, I'm sorry, as you go down the epoch, as you go down each echelon, down the epoch, things get simpler. As you go up the epoch, uh, things get more complicated. Okay, but once you have sub integer, subtract, and add, now you can do integer, multiply, and divide. And of course, the subtract and add follow along to the next echelon. Once you have these four integer functions, then you can do multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition in floating point, which means it's floating point instead of just being a counting number, which is one, two, three, you have a fractional number like 1.237, whatever, whatever. And of course, you still get all of your integer math here. I'm not going to keep copying all this stuff down. Okay. Uh, once you have floating point, multiply, divide, addition, and subtraction, now you can do all your, your transcendental functions, which is sine, cosine, tangent, logarithm, blah, 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 blah. As you keep going up the epoch, the complexity of what you can do becomes virtually infinite. That's the purpose for the infinity sign. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that then, okay, you can use mathematics to then simulate something, let's say ethereal mechanics or universal simulation. And because the simulation, because the mathematics can define a universe that has infinite dimensions or even fractional dimensions, but scientists today say that our universe can be um, it can be described in less than 12 dimensions or somewhere somewhere about there. That means if you have infinite dimensions, but you only need 12 to, to simulate the universe, then the universe is a subset of mathematics. And that's why I'm showing this, this part peering into a small section of mathematics. Okay, so the next echelon of simulating the universe is a small part of the output of the simulation, of, of the output of mathematics. So let me say that again. Mathematics is a, what you can do in mathematics is a superset of what you need to simulate the universe. Okay, therefore there's a lot of mathematical uh, outputs here that are not the universe. You could derive uh, the infinite different types of universes. So just because you can mathematically derive something does not mean it falls within the universe that we know. And I just put ethereal mechanics here because that's what I'm going to, that's the route I'm going. I mean over here this would be uh, you know, uh, uh, relativity, or maybe even these overlap a little bit. You know, it's uh, it, it's just this is just a notional thing here, but to show you that the universe is a subset of what mathematics can do. That's why I say that just because you can mathematically derive something does not mean it appears in the universe. 
because you can come up with a universe that's got fractional dimensions, which may have, may have nothing to do with our universe. So be careful. When you derive something, it may not be true, but anything we observe in the universe should be mathematically definable. Okay, and this rule of acquisition number 16 is mathematics is superset of the universe. We talked about uh, acquisition rule number 16 before. Okay, and just because something can be derived mathematically does not mean that it exists in nature. And let me give you an example. Um, in the field of electronics, they have intrinsic inductance, or internal inductance, some people call it. And there's no force model for it, so they used an energy derivation. And because they used an energy derivation, they came up for the intrinsic inductance per unit length. This is actually per unit length, uh, inductance per length, um, of a, uh, of a, a uh, cylindrical wire. And what they said, this model says that the inductance is in independent of the diameter of the wire. And my friends, that is not true. You can do a simple experiment to show that that's not true, that this is a wrong model. And you can go to my distinti.com docs ne thesis pdf and that'll show you a simple experiment that shows that this is completely wrong. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, and we'll cover this in a later video, that anything that's energy derived is wrong or subject to being wrong. So in a recap, if you can do what this microprocessor can do, if you can add, okay, if you can add then you can do anything that Einstein can do because he really wasn't that good at math. Um, now let me show you, this is an interesting, I, I gotta give this guy a lot of credit, this picture of Einstein here, this is not a photograph. Okay, this is a hand, pencil drawing and when I was looking for a picture of Einstein I was like, amazed that this is actually a pencil drawing. Uh, this guy does a lot of work, he's at jjkeifer.com, I, re I recommend, he's got a lot of famous people he does as, as pencil drawings, they're fantastic. Uh, definitely check out his website. So what's next? Uh, video number 10, we're going to talk about the ends of Mother Nature. We're going to take what I just showed you about the, e uh, the epochs of Mother Nature and we're going to apply it. We're going to come up with a very interesting conjecture about where we fit in the universe. After we're done, we're going to do a recap of the rules of acquisition and pain up to this point, And then we're going to continue on our quest for the ether. Thank you very much.